All right. Buckle up, listeners, because today we're diving headfirst into the world of particle physics. We're talking about the future circular collider or uh, the FCC, and we're super excited to uh, dig into this with all of you. So from what I understand, this thing makes the Large Hadron Collider look like a like a child's plaything. Well, right? That's a pretty good way to put it. It's... Uh... Definitely a major step up, that's for sure. So, like for those of us who maybe haven't spent, you know, years in physics labs, what is what is the FCC exactly? Can you give us a quick rundown? Sure. So, uh, at its heart, it's a proposed particle collider, mm -hmm. and uh, just to give you a sense of scale, we're talking about a tunnel, right? A tunnel that would stretch ninety kilometers in circumference. Ninety kilometers. That's like what three times, four times the size of the LHC. It's it's massive. To put it in perspective, you could fit like three and a half Manhattan Islands inside this thing. Wow. Okay. So uh, size is definitely a factor here. But I mean, it's not just about size, is it? What about the power of this thing? Right. So the FCC is designed to collide particles at energies six times higher than what we can achieve at the LHC. Six times. So like exponentially more powerful. Exactly. Think of it like... You know how when you look through a microscope, you see things in more detail, the more powerful it is? Yeah, yeah. It's it's like that, but for the uh, the fundamental building blocks of the universe, we're talking a huge leap in resolution. Okay, so we're basically talking about seeing things nobody's ever seen before. Potentially, yes. Yeah. And this is where it gets really interesting. The FCC project actually has two main phases. First, there's the FCCE, which is all about smashing electrons together. Okay, and why electrons specifically? What's What's so special about those? Colliding electrons gives us insanely precise measurements, which helps us fine tune our understanding of like the really basic stuff, the fundamental particles and forces that make up everything. So it's about like perfecting what we already know. Yeah. Gotcha. But then what's the what's the second phase all about? That's where things get really wild. That's the SCCH, a Hadron Collider like the LAC, but uh, just way more powerful. And that's where we'd be smashing protons together at those at those mind-blowing energy levels. And that's the one with the real potential for brand new discoveries, right? Exactly. Because with that kind of energy, we could be creating particles that uh, that we've never even seen before, stuff that could completely change our understanding of the universe. Okay, now we're talking. So in a nutshell, the FCC could either prove everything we thought we knew about particle physics, or it could completely upend it. Pretty much. And either way, it's going to be a wild ride. This is this is groundbreaking stuff. Oh, absolutely. This is uh, this is definitely one to watch. It's not every day you get to potentially rewrite the laws of physics. No kidding. But before we get too far ahead of ourselves, let's let's back up a bit. We keep mentioning the standard model. Can you give us a quick uh, refresher on what that is exactly? Sure. Think of the standard model like um, like the periodic table, mm -hmm. but for for the universe's tiniest particles and the forces that govern them, it's basically our best attempt to like categorize and explain how everything at the most basic level interacts. So the FCC is aiming to either validate the standard model with incredible accuracy or blow it wide open and force us to start from scratch. Exactly. And either outcome would be a monumental win for science. All right. So we're talking about potentially rewriting the textbooks on particle physics. That's uh, that's pretty huge. But for those of us who aren't, you know, particle physicists, what would these discoveries actually mean? What are some of the big questions this thing could help us answer? Well, one of the biggest mysteries in the universe right now is uh, is dark matter. Dark matter. Okay, yeah. I think I get the the basic idea from, you know, sci-fi movies and stuff, but to be honest, it's always seemed a bit, uh, a, bit a bit hypothetical. Yeah, it's one of those things where the more we learn, the more we realize we don't know, but basically astronomers have observed these gravitational effects out there in the universe that uh, that we just can't explain with the matter we can see. So like there's something there, but we can't see it. Exactly. It's like there's this invisible hand out there influencing how galaxies move, almost like a cosmic scaffolding. And that scaffolding is what we call dark matter. Exactly. And it's not just a small amount either. Current estimates suggest that dark matter might make up as much as 85% of all the matter in the universe. 85%. So we're basically living in a universe dominated by something we've never actually seen. Pretty much. We know it's there because of its gravity, but we have absolutely no idea what it's made of. And that's one of the things that the FCC could potentially help us figure out. So with these crazy high energy levels, could the FCC actually, like, create dark matter? Well, not exactly create it, but... Uh... So we think that dark matter interacts with normal matter, 
through a force that we haven't discovered yet. And the FCC it might be able to create particles that actually interact through this new force, which would give us our first real glimpse into the world of dark matter. So imagine like shining a light into a dark room and suddenly you can see the shadows and shapes of things you never even knew were there. That's a, that's a great way to put it. And here's where it gets even more mind blowing. What if the FCC doesn't find any evidence of these hypothetical dark matter particles? Okay, yeah, that's a big if, yeah. but let's say it happens. What then? Well, that might actually be even more groundbreaking because it would mean that our current models of the universe are missing something really fundamental. We'd have to go back to the drawing board, rethink everything. It would be a complete revolution in our understanding of the cosmos. So it's like heads we win, tails we win. No matter what we discover or don't discover, it's going to be huge. Exactly. And it's important to remember that dark matter is just one piece of the puzzle. There are countless other unknowns out there, things we haven't even begun to imagine, things that the FCC could potentially uncover. You're talking about those unknown unknowns, the things that just completely blindside us and change our whole perspective. Like, what was it when they first discovered antimatter? I bet that threw a wrench in everything. Absolutely. Every time we push the boundaries of particle physics, we seem to stumble upon something completely unexpected. And the FCC, that's, that's what it's all about. It's a leap into the unknown, and that's what makes it so incredibly exciting. I can definitely see why people are excited. But before we get too carried away with all the amazing possibilities, let's uh, let's talk about the competition for a second. Are there any other like contenders in this race to unravel the secrets of the universe? There's always uh, always healthy competition in science, and the FCC is no exception. One of the more more interesting alternatives being proposed is something called a muon collider. A muon collider. Okay, first of all, what the heck is a muon? So, uh, you can think of muons as like heavier, less stable cousins of the electron. They're these fascinating particles that we can create in accelerators. And they have these these unique properties that make them uh, potentially ideal for colliding. Okay, so what makes a muon collider different from the FCC? What are the advantages? Well, one big difference is size. Muon colliders, they could, uh, they could potentially achieve similar energy levels to the FCC, but in a much smaller space. And because of the way muons interact, they produce fewer of these, these unwanted particles in the collisions, which means the data is cleaner and easier to analyze. So smaller, cleaner, more efficient. That sounds great. Why isn't everybody jumping on the muon collider bandwagon then? Well, there's a catch, of course. Muons are incredibly unstable, <laughs> like they decay in a fraction of a second, which makes it extremely challenging to, you know, create them, accelerate them and collide them before they just poof, disappear. So it's a classic trade off. Yeah. A potentially more elegant and efficient design, but with these massive uh, technical hurdles to overcome. Exactly. And that's what makes this whole field so dynamic and exciting. It's this constant push and pull between ambition, ingenuity and the very limits of what's technologically possible. It really highlights how these massive scientific projects are about so much more than just the science. You know, it's about pushing the boundaries of human ingenuity and, and really our ability to understand this universe that we live in. Absolutely. It takes a certain uh, certain level of ambition, a willingness to dream big and chase after those uh, those seemingly impossible goals. It makes you wonder, though, about the cost of those dreams, because all of this cutting edge science, it doesn't come cheap, does it? You're right about that. And with a project as ambitious as the FCC, we're talking about some pretty hefty costs. Costs that would make even the most uh, experienced financiers sweat a little. OK, let's be real. All of this sounds amazing, but it can't be cheap, right? <laughs> How much are we talking about here for the FCC? Well, the estimated cost is somewhere around 12 billion. 12 billion. OK, yeah, that's a that's a pretty penny. And and that's just for the first phase, right? Just for the electron collider. That's right. Just for the FCC, the Hadron Collider, the uh, FCCHH, that would likely cost even more. Wow. It really makes you think, even if the scientific payoff is huge, is there like a point where the price tag is just, I don't know, too high? That's the that's the billion euro question, isn't it? And it's a debate that's happening right now, not just among scientists, but, uh, you know, policymakers, the public. Everyone, really. So you're saying some scientists are actually hesitant about this whole thing. I mean, I figured they'd be like lining up to get their hands on this kind of technology. Well, a lot of them are. Absolutely. But there are definitely some who are urging caution. Why is that? Is it just the cost or are there other concerns? Well, cost is definitely a major factor, especially when you consider, you know, all the other scientific research that could be funded with that kind of money. But there are scientific concerns as well. Like what? Some physicists worry 
that while the FCC might give us more precise measurements of known particles, there's no guarantee that it will lead to, you know, really groundbreaking new discoveries. So it's like we could build this this massive, super powerful machine, but it might not actually tell us anything we didn't already know. Essentially, yes. Yeah. And when you're dealing with that level of investment, well, it's a gamble that some scientists just aren't willing to take. I can see that, especially with other projects out there like that muon collider we talked about, which might be a more, uh, I guess, a more focused approach. Exactly. And potentially more cost effective, too. So, yeah, it's a really complex issue with no easy answers. For sure. And it's not just about the science either, is it? I mean, a project of this scale, it has implications for, well, for everything, the environment, the economy, even just the logistics of building something this massive. Absolutely. It's yeah. a huge undertaking, no doubt about it. So where do things stand right now? What are the next steps for the FCC? Well, CERN is currently in the, you know, the planning and development phase, making the scientific case and trying to get the necessary support from its member states. The big decision is expected sometime next year. So the world is watching and waiting. It's really incredible to think that, you know, we're at this point where we have the potential to build machines that can unlock the deepest secrets of the universe. It kind of blows my mind. Me too. It really is an exciting time to be a physicist. And who knows what incredible discoveries await us in the years to come. It's going to be a wild ride for sure. Well, that's all the time we have for today's deep dive into the world of the future circular collider. We hope you've enjoyed exploring this mind-blowing topic with us. Until next time, stay curious, keep asking questions, and don't be afraid to dream big.